Welcome back to Spoonful of Sugar. Today's episode is going to be on heart block, but before we get started, I'd like to share with you an announcement. We have an available leadership opportunity for medical students who have taken USMLE Step 1 to join our Spoonful of Sugar student board. We're looking to fill both chair and member positions within our four student board committees, content, marketing, tech, and research. This podcast was really intended to be made for the students, by the students, Um, and so we're looking for medical students who are dedicated to education and want to help continue to build our SOS community. This is an excellent opportunity to obtain a leadership position, connect with medical students from other schools, and truly make a difference in med student education. The students that are selected to serve on our student board will essentially be producing our next season of Spoonful of Sugar. If you'd like more specific information on the roles and responsibilities of each of the four committees, as well as a link to the application form, please visit spoonfulofsugar.org slash apply. We're accepting applications through December 15th, and the position will be for the 2024 calendar year. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at contact at spoonfulofsugar.org. And again, visit spoonfulofsugar.org slash apply for more information. I really hope you'll consider this opportunity. And without further ado, let's get into our episode on Heart Block, hosted by Tanya Moherker. Hope you enjoy. Hey, future doctors. Thanks for tuning into Spoonful of Sugar, a podcast made for medical students by medical students to help the medicine go down. My name is Tanya Mulherker. I'm a student at Drexel University College of Medicine, and I will be your host today. Let's jump right in. A 62-year-old male with a history of coronary artery disease and hypertension comes to the ED complaining of lightheadedness and fatigue. What sort of things are you starting to think about? What's on your differential? It's okay to stay broad at this point. So some things that are on my differential are dehydration, it could be electrolyte abnormalities, hypotension, which could be either orthostatic or medication-induced, considering this is a hypertensive patient, probably on medications, hypoglycemia, anemia, infection, so always consider things like UTI, pneumonia, and Importantly for this patient, a cardiac cause. So this patient has a history of coronary artery disease, and we have to start thinking about things like arrhythmias, including bradyarrhythmias and heart block. What kinds of tests would you want to start with? So starting out with vitals, we would want to check this patient's blood pressure, temperature to see if any signs of infection are present, heart rate, always check a blood glucose, never miss hypoglycemia, some blood tests, we could get some CBC with differential, maybe even some iron studies to check if this patient is anemic, and most importantly for our cardiac patients, we really want an EKG. In this short episode, we will be discussing bradyarrhythmias, including heart blocks, focusing on their presentation, EKG findings, and treatment. This podcast will be in a question-answer format, so I will be asking a lot of questions. I encourage you to think about the answers and always pause if you need. So starting off, let's just go through some basics. What is a normal heart rate? So normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Any slower, and what does this classify as? A bradyarrhythmia. Any faster, what would it be called? A tachyarrhythmia. What type of rhythm is considered normal? A normal rhythm is called a sinus rhythm. And what does sinus rhythm exactly mean? So a normal sinus rhythm is a rhythm that originates in the sinus node, which is in the right atrium of the heart. And on EKG, it looks like a P wave preceding every QRS complex with all the P waves looking normal, which would be upright in lead two. For a quick review, let's walk through all the steps of depolarization of the heart. 
Where does the action potential initiate? I'm going to break it down into seven steps. That's your hint. So the excitation originates in the sinoatrial or SA node. Then it propagates through both atria. It spreads to the AV node, passes through the bundle of his, passes through the Purkinje fibers, then goes to the right and left bundle branches, and eventually the ventricular muscles. We'll be walking through what each bradyarrhythmia looks like on EKG as well, so let's just quickly review what a normal EKG looks like and what each wave corresponds to. So what is the P wave? This corresponds to atrial depolarization. What about the PR interval? This corresponds to conduction through the AV node. What about the QRS complex? The QRX complex corresponds to ventricular depolarization. And what about the T wave? This is ventricular repolarization. All right, so let's start out by talking about sinus bradycardia. So what would you see on an EKG for sinus bradycardia? It's actually in the name. So sinus means it's a sinus rhythm, which is, again, a normal P wave preceding every QRS complex. Brady means slow, so it will be slower than normal. And how many beats again is that? So slower than 60 beats per minute. Sinus bradycardia is a regular sinus rhythm with a heart rate below 60 beats per minute. What are some causes of sinus bradycardia? You could see this in athletes with cardiovascular conditioning, but it can also be present with sinus node dysfunction and some medications. What would be some medications that can cause sinus bradycardia? The two that jump to mind are beta blockers and calcium channel blockers when used in excess. Is there an issue with electrical conduction in sinus bradycardia? No, the rhythm is slower than expected, but everything else is otherwise normal. What symptoms would you expect in someone with sinus bradycardia? So it could be asymptomatic, but it could also present with lightheadedness, syncope, chest pain, or even hypotension. And what is the treatment for asymptomatic sinus bradycardia? If it's asymptomatic, you actually don't have to treat it with anything. Usually in these situations, the heart rate is above 40 beats per minute. What is the medical treatment for symptomatic sinus bradycardia? So you would want a medication that actually increases the heart rate. Atropine is commonly used to increase the heart rate in symptomatic sinus bradycardia. And what drug class is atropine and how does it work? Atropine is an anticholinergic drug and it inhibits the muscarinic action of acetylcholine on receptors to block cholinergic activity, which would otherwise cause cardiac slowing. So now we're going to switch gears and go back and think about the normal conduction pathway of the heart again. What happens if this conduction gets disrupted? There might be a slowing of the propagation of the electric potential through the heart. So this could cause the heart to beat slower overall. There could also be a slowing down between depolarization of different parts of the heart. This will be visible on EKG. What's another name for this problem? This is called heart block. Where does heart block commonly occur in the heart? It commonly occurs in the AV node. And what interval does this correspond to on EKG again? The PR interval. 
So again, the P wave shows atrial depolarization. The beginning of the QRS complex is the ventricular depolarization. So sometime during the PR interval, the potential conducts down the AV node. How many types of AV block are there? There are three degrees. There's first, second, and third. And there's technically four types because second degree has a type 1 and type 2 that we'll talk about. As the degree gets higher, the conduction between the atria and the ventricle becomes increasingly blocked, meaning there will be a bigger gap between depolarization. And let's talk about all these degrees of AV block in more detail now. What would you see on an EKG with first degree AV block? So first degree, there will still be some conduction through the AV node, but it is a bit slowed down. So on EKG, you will start to see a increased PR interval, and the interval will be over 200 milliseconds. But keep in mind that the PR interval, even though it's long, it will be equal throughout the EKG. What are some causes of first degree AV block? It can occur in normal individuals, but it's also associated with beta blocker and calcium channel blocker use. It's also associated with increased vagal tone. What are some symptoms of first degree AV block? Okay, this is a trick question because it's usually asymptomatic. So what's the treatment for first degree AV block? None is necessary because again, it's asymptomatic. What is another name for second degree AV block type one or Mobitz type one? It's also called Wenckebach. What would you see on EKG for second degree AV block type one or Wenckebach? So this is the interesting one. You will see progressive PR lengthening until a dropped beat occurs. So that means the PR interval will continuously get longer, 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 and then eventually a dropped beat will occur. Then the PR interval will reset and that pattern keeps occurring again. And because there is a pattern, you can kind of expect the dropped beat. What are some causes of second degree AV block type one? So it can be caused by right coronary ischemia or infarction, because again, this is where the nodes are. But it can also be caused by beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, and even digoxin use. It's also associated with increased vagal tone. Some symptoms of second degree AV block type one. So it's also usually asymptomatic, but if it is symptomatic, this presentation is similar to sinus bradycardia symptoms with lightheadedness, syncope, chest pain, or hypotension. What's the treatment for second degree AV block type 1? So if symptomatic, you could use atropine as clinically indicated, similar to sinus bradycardia, but if it's asymptomatic, no treatment is required. What would you see on EKG for second degree AV block type 2? So this is also called Mobitz type 2 and here you would see unexpected dropped beats without a change in PR interval. So there's no pattern like you see in second degree block type 1. Um, so you can't really anticipate the dropped beat, it just randomly happens. What are some causes of second degree AV block type 2? This can be caused by fibrotic disease of the conduction system, acute, subacute, or prior myocardial infarction. And what are some symptoms? These patients can present occasionally with syncope, but that's really the main symptom. And what are some complications of second degree type 2 AV block? It could turn into third degree AV block. So what's the treatment? Because it's an unpredictable dropped beat and it can also progress to third degree AV block, the treatment is a little bit more aggressive and you really want to pace these people and give them a pacemaker. 
What would you see on EKG for a third degree AV block? So third degree is the last degree of AV block, so it's the worst kind, and that means it's a complete AV block. The electrical signal does not travel at all from the atria to the ventricles. So basically what happens is the SA node is essentially the pacemaker for the atria, and then the AV node acts as the pacemaker for the ventricles. So on EKG, you won't really see a, any relationship between the P waves and the QRS complexes. They kind of just go at their own paces. What are some symptoms of third degree AV block? So they can present with syncope, dizziness, hypotension, acute heart failure, and you can also see cannon A waves. So what are cannon A waves? Cannon A waves are large amplitude waves that you can see in the jugular veins during physical exam. And they're basically caused by simultaneous contraction of the atria and ventricles, which leads to an exaggerated right atrial pressure, and there's kind of a rebound of the blood right back into the jugular veins. What is the treatment for third degree AV block? So again, for third degree, you would just do a pacemaker. All right, so that actually brings us to the end of the content for this episode, but I wanted to end with a quick review to simplify this information for you guys. So during my rotations, I actually heard this heart block poem that I thought might be helpful just to remember the different types of heart block. And it goes like this. If the R is far from the P, then you have a first degree. Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a wanky bock. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz type 2. If P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. So, again, just review. If R is far from P means the PR interval is over 200 milliseconds and it's constant. That's a first degree heart block. Longer, longer, longer drop means the PR interval progressively gets longer and then there's a dropped beat. That's Wenke Bach, otherwise known as second degree type 1. If P's don't get through, then you have a Mobitz type 2. That means that there will occasionally be a dropped beat. That is a Mobitz type 2 or a second degree type 2 block. And if P's and Q's don't agree, meaning the P's, P waves and the Q waves are doing their own thing on their EKG, that means there's a complete AV block, which is a third degree AV block. And now breaking down the treatments, basically if it's asymptomatic, they don't need treatment. If it's symptomatic, either sinus bradycardia, first degree, or wanky bock, you can consider using atropine, which is an anticholinergic drug, to increase the heart rate. And if it is second degree type 2, otherwise known as Mobitz type 2, or a third degree heart block, even if they're asymptomatic, both conditions require pacemaker placement. That's all, folks. Thank you for listening. If you found this episode helpful, please subscribe to our podcast. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, visit our website at spoonfulofsugar.org and post them under the link for this episode. Good luck with studying, and remember that if you ever have an SOS moment while studying, Spoonful of Sugar is always here to help the medicine go down.